Shalom. Oh, hello, Yahweh Bashim El Shai, Bahashem Rakar Kudash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so, now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth among the heathens that look like the heathens. And to the Akwath that are listening and learning to you, I say Shabawam. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago, coming at you with another lesson in truth. And uh, this is a video that uh, that was done by the beloved brother Amawana Pod. Uh, I got a message from him that he was looking at an old video that I did on this uh, the Voronet Monastery, and um, you know, and he went in on it and did an excellent lesson. You can see the name of the video at the bottom of the screen. What is the Voronet? Uh, Monastery by Amawana Bot, and I highly suggest that you uh, watch and subscribe to be uh, edified continually. But um, it dawned on me, I was watching, and this part when I did my lesson, I missed this. I never even caught this, and a brother pointed it out. But right here, there is a hand, a dark hand, handing down judgment, holding balances. And then this is, and you see all these Edomites. These uh, so-called white people um, going, let me turn that off, going into captivity by the angels with afros. And he pointed out also um, how, you know, during this time, when you look at the dark ages, all right, um, you know, prior, prior to the Renaissance, this is what all the holy relics in the churches look like from the time of Constantinople all the way up until the fall of Portugal and Spain in 1492. And even still throughout Europe, you still find uh, this this sort of imagery. As a matter of fact, you got a, uh, Vladimir Putin uh, did a, a live, you know, that was a live show of him on television about a month ago. And in, in the church that he was in, in the background, you had the so-called black saints, right? Because they were so-called black. They were the Israelites. They were dark flesh people. They were melanated people. They weren't, they were not pale. And in that ancient, in that old church, they actually had, you know, the images of the saints and of the men of the Lord and the people of the Lord. And you see the one, the, them here on this one, they're holding the, uh, you know, it looks like they're holding the Holy Scrolls. All right. But uh, let's go back to where Amoana Bod was. I'm going to read uh, Psalms 85 and, uh, and 3. But before I do, I'm going to read uh, uh, page 22 out of Blacks in Antiquity by uh, Frank M. Snowden. All right. Blacks in Antiquity. And it reads... Um, Art, in some respects, is more valuable than the literature as a source of information for anthropological, anthropological data because it tells much that the text does not about the amount of pragmatism or its absence. Okay? The extent of platony and lip eversion, facial proportions. So, in other words, the art... And the relics found from different time periods uh, tell a different story from what they write in the books and what they put on film. And I constantly keep using the, uh, the Last Kingdom, how they get all the imagery right. Because you could put every member of the cast of the Last Kingdom in this photo. All right. But that would make the photo incorrect. But the wardrobes would be on point. The garments, you know, the jewelry. The, the uh, you know, the uh, the furniture, the kitchen, the weaponry, the belts, the armor, everything's on point except this. Because this, this church was erected in 14, in, in uh, mid-1400s, I believe. All right? You know, early 1400s. All right? And now I'm going to read Psalms 83. And uh, about to verse... Uh, from one to seven, and it says, 
Keep not thy silence, O power. This is Psalms 83 and 1. Keep not thy silence, O power. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult that they may, and they that hate thee, thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. See, the Israelites were the hidden ones. Hidden in plain sight. All right. And it says, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And one of the main ways they did that was iconoclasm. And also iconoclasm via, via the, the moving picture. Because, you know, since before moving pictures, since from, from 1492 on up, from the time that Michelangelo and, and Leonardo da Vinci were commissioned to repaint all the, the, the icons to do the Sistine Chapel, they, they covered up the faces of the judges thereof by painting pale people and then propagating, pushing those lies into the world, to the whole Western world. All right. Even though the evidences of their lies, well, as you see, are still in existence. The de the evidences, all right? And it says, they uh, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel be no more remembered. But they have consulted with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom. And the Ishmaelites and the Moabites and the Hagarenes, right? That was that's the so-called white man, Edom, right? The Ishmaelites are the uh, uh, are the so-called Arabs, a portion of them. Moab, the Chinese, the Hagarenes, more Ishmaelites, right? Gabal, more Ishmaelites. Ammon, the Japanese, and Amalek, the small hats, all right? Esau's mentioned in there twice as well. The Philistines, all right? which were the Hamites at the time, the Canaanites, the African Canaanites, the real sons of Ham, okay? Not the, you know, Ishmaelites that live there now, uh, with the inhabitants of Tyree, more Africans, Hamites, okay? Assur, those would be people that were in Syria, also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot, Selah. So these people came to get together against us in the, ancient world and their plans still push forward today problem is is that the alliances with these people are breaking up and certain individual of them are, uh, are beginning to tell the truth and expose secrets mostly the secrets that were uh that benefited uh the so-called white people and he talks about all these religions right around the 17th minute mark i'm gonna just put it there and it dawned on me that these religions that were pushed into the West and upon the Israelites that were being controlled by these people and in the places they were scattered, that was all a part of the crafty council. So let's let this video finish out. Assyria. That's why in Revelation 17, it's called what? The Great Whore. Because it rules with wickedness and is in bed with the other nations around the world and allows all the ancient pagan wicked worships of idolatry, Buddhism, Confucianism, Hinduism, Christianity under a false doctrine, Islam. So this place is called the great whore according to Revelation 17. The whore that sitteth upon many waters. <clears throat> so let's go into the final judgment where the elect men are going to be raised up as great warriors, as mighty men through the spirit of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. And that's going to come after the great judgment by thermal destruction and fire. So let's close out here Book of Psalms, chapter 149, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord, Yahweh. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of the saints. 
that new song is going to be victory, salvation, and deliverance. First, you have to come to this truth. And that's going to culminate in deliverance and salvation, victory, and glory. <clears throat> Verse 2. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Why? Because deliverance and salvation is going to come through our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai, whom you ignorantly call Jesus. First Psalms 149 and 3. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord take pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meat with salvation. <clears throat> Psalms 149 and 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of Yahweh be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. And this is coming. And this is going to be a literal sword. That's right. And I wouldn't doubt that it would be a fiery, flaming sword. Because the elect men are going to be raised up with extraterrestrial supernatural strength. The true Jedi. As in the days of old, the mighty men of Valor, like Samson, King David, and the mighty men from the days of old. <clears throat> Psalms 149 and 6. Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. What are the elect men are going to be raised up to do with that sword? Verse 7, to execute vengeance upon the heathen, and punishment upon the people, to bind their kings with chains, and their nobles with fetters of iron, just like we read in Nahum 3 and 10. International bankers are going to go into captivity. But most of the Edomites are going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction, followed by laser and chariot fire coming by the so called UFOs. And the remnant, the international global elites, are going to be bound in chains by great mighty men that's going to be raised up. That's right. Let me, uh, Wrap it up with this. This is 2nd Ezra 6 and 27. And it reads, For evil shall be put out, and deceit shall be quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome, and truth, which have been so long without fruit, shall be declared. And that's what you're witnessing. The truth is being declared. All right? And what you're looking at on the screen was a future prophecy. All right? And this is what is about to happen. So with that, I'm going to give all praises, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, the Karkadash. Double honors to the apostles, double honors to the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers. And wa ababa ba, Kwame Yasserala Shalom.